Welcome to Here We Are, Brattleboro's community talk show. Today we're in the studio with Annie Quest, and Annie is an artist, performer, and teacher. She works with kids of all ages in various venues, um, including a studio art camp that she does in the summer, uh, the group that many people have heard of called the Annies, and she is also a teacher at Greenwood School. So welcome, Annie. Thank you, Wendy. We're very glad to have you here today. It's lovely and to be here. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. And um, we're going to um, be talking about uh, her life and where she's, how she's come to Brattleboro and the various things that she's done in Brattleboro. I know that you spent some time as a kid in New York City. I did. And you got to do a lot of very cool New York City things. I did. It was a really great place to grow up. And I was very lucky to have um, a mom who really was into enriching my mm -hmm. life. So I saw a lot of theater when I was in New York, mm -hmm. and I went to marionette shows, and the, the Central Park Zoo was near my house, mm -hmm. and I went to a lot of museums, and I was very lucky to be able to take classes at some of the museums. Oh. There were art classes for children uh -huh. at the Museum of Modern Art and different venues like mm -hmm. that. So it was, it was pretty great. Yeah. Um, in fact, I was so enamored with the, uh, the Mets, I think it was the Mets um, Egyptian collection mm. that I, I kind of thought that it I kind of thought that it was mine. I was a little possessive <laughs> of it, and and at six thought I might be an Egyptologist. Uh huh. You know that's interesting. Just to interject because I think that um, Egypt and you know mythology and that whole period, that whole thing that kids go through yeah. during a certain phase. I remember feeling the same way about Egypt and yeah. the mummies. The you know, mummies and yeah. The, and the mummified cats and yes. crocodiles. And what and they things. took with them into the afterworld and you know, all of the beautiful things yeah. that they left behind. Yeah. And the Met That's has interesting. this outrageous collection. Yeah. 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 Sorry to interrupt. Beautiful. So go ahead. That's fine. <laughs> no, no, but it was it was just a very enriching environment. So when you were taking classes at the Met, mm -hmm. was it like the usual art classes? They were yeah, they were children's art classes. I think there were some that met once a week, mm -hmm. you know, maybe on a Wednesday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Um, and then occasionally there would be some sort of a, a weekend mm -hmm. class. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was always, my parents kept me busy. Mm -hmm. I think I was a really active, um, I got into things. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it was really great for them to find things to do to keep me busy. Yeah, yeah. And they would accompany you probably over to these I for a while? I don't know if they did. Um, they may have, they may have just sort of dropped me off and picked right. me up. Uh huh. I'm not really sure. I don't remember them participating. I mostly remember just yeah. going off to right. these interesting right. things. What a wealth of stuff to have when I was a kid. It was great. Mm -hmm. And New York City was a really great place to grow up. Yeah. And theater? And I saw a lot of theater and I, a lot of marionette theater. Mm. Um, prob I think the first play that I was ever in was in a public school in New York City. Hmm. I think I was a devil. And I think I recall someone making a comment about how apropos that was, because uh -huh. <laughs> I was a bit of a, a wild girl. Uh huh. But you got your first taste of theater at that age. I did. It, yeah. I did. Actually, I don't. I don't really know that I loved it. I think it may have been terrifying. But. But something compelled you. It's, well, I think everybody had to be in the play. I think that this was a school oh, play. Mm -hmm. But I was compelled a little bit later in life when we moved to Connecticut. Mm -hmm. um, I was, there, there was a congregational church that did pageants. Mm -hmm. And I was so driven to be in the pageant that I convinced my parents to take me to church every Sunday. And, and um, I joined the youth group and uh -huh. got to be an angel <laughs> really? in my second role. <laughs> which is, I think, more astonishing than the devil. That's interesting. And yeah. do you remember that? Do you remember the feelings that you had being on stage? I absolutely remember the angel. I think the devil, the devil role was, I don't know, I think it was very generic, but I do remember the feeling of standing. I think we were standing on the, um, on the steps to the pulpit, oh. the angels were, and we were, we, we were just very beatific and yeah. heavenly and yeah. wonderful. Uh -huh. Yeah, I but loved it. I was in New York from the age of three, three until I seven see. or eight. Okay, okay, so that's pretty formatory for things like that. Yeah. Um, and then did oh, they... Oh, and I also, the, the Bernstein 
concerts, oh. children's concerts were amazing too. Oh. Leonard Bernstein did these beautiful yeah. uh, performances for kids. Specifically for kids, well, like Saturday afternoon kind of Saturday concerts? Saturday afternoon kinds of concerts. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, all kinds of different things? I think so. Yeah, I right. I think so. I just, it's, again, it's, it's yeah. a little bit vague, but yeah. it was delicious. And, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and those kind of impressions, you know, you might not remember the plot or the scenes or anything, but just the impact of going on Broadway for any of us yeah. or in, in front of theater or live music yep. in New York, especially. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. It was great. Um, and then did you do theater in high school at all? I did. I did theater um, in, I went to a school called the Stockbridge School, mm -hmm. and they had a theater program, and I'm, I'm sure that I probably was at, in at least one or two performances every year. Mm -hmm. I really got kind of a... a got the bug. Um, there was a lovely woman, I can't remember her last name, her first name was Amy, but she, there was a lovely woman who was a young teacher and an intern and she taught a lovely class, a Shakespeare class, and we all did monologues. Oh wow. And so I was very inspired by her. So you were learning Shakespeare, so this is high school, you were this learning Shakespeare. High school. Yeah, that's a great time to start that memorization yeah. process, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And were you doing art and music as well I during that time? I was doing art and music. I worked with a remarkable artist who was a WP artist, WPA mm -hmm. artist named Kalman Kubini. Mm -hmm. And he, um, he was formidable and he did all sorts of really interesting things like he did a Dada exhibition. I'd never heard of Dadaism mm -hmm. and, and so he was he was very eclectic. He was great. He really, you know, made us take our art very seriously. Mm -hmm. um, at a young age, I think I was in ninth grade. Mm -hmm. That was pretty great. Yeah. And so that carried that kind of study carried through high school. It did. Yeah. It carried through high school and um, got to the I got to the point in high school where I actually left Stockbridge and I finished my senior year uh, in my hometown. My mom had passed away and um, I was able to get some of my credits by teaching classes. So I think the mm. first art class that I ever taught was a neighborhood art class and mm -hmm. I got high school credits for that. Yeah, that's Which interesting, great. Given, given your history as well. You started working with kids at a pretty early age. I did. Yeah. I did. And I had no intention of becoming a teacher. Uh huh. Yeah, but there was something about it. There was something yeah, about it yeah. that was really yeah. great. I think being the oldest, uh, the oldest sibling, and also the oldest cousin oh, mm -hmm. may have had something to oh, do sure. with that. Yeah, and also probably it was fun, right? You got to hang out with fun. kids and make things and do yeah, things. Yeah, absolutely. So you go from there to Marlboro. How'd you end up in Marlboro? A little tiny. My <laughs> my very best friend um, ended up there, mm -hmm. and she loved it. We were, she was from Wilton, Connecticut as well. Mm -hmm. She was older than I was. And I went to visit her and um, I was diagnosed with dyslexia in seventh grade. Mm. So I, I just instinctively knew that I needed a really creative school and I knew mm. that I needed a small school. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't even bother to apply anywhere else. Mm. Wow. You know, I, I drove up that hill and looked around and said, this is where I want to be. And I, I'd already fallen in love with Vermont um, a couple of years earlier. Uh -huh. And I think the first time I ever spent any time in Vermont, I knew that I wanted to live really? here somehow instinctively. Yeah. yeah, I think that happens to a lot of people. I think so too. Yeah, yeah. it happened to me. Yeah. I remember going through Brattleboro, I think in 1970. You oh, know, and really? thinking, yeah, thinking, oh, I've gone on the way to Maine, thinking, oh, I could see being here, you yeah. know, and then, you know, 10 years later I was. There you were. Yeah, yeah. A lot of us have ended up here that I way. I know, yeah, I know, and yeah. a lot of us have ended up here via Marlboro. It's sort of incredible mm -hmm. how many people I know in the area. For that a are, little school, yes. That yeah. and Wyndham, you know, two, That's little, right. two little schools that conquered That's the right. world. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and so, uh, so you did in Marlboro. You you were still continuing with theater and art and literature and. I was. I was. I was um, coming in as an art student, mm -hmm. and I really thought that I would pursue art. And I took some art history classes, which I loved. It was the first time in my entire life that art, uh, that history, had a an image. That's, or history had a series of images. Yeah. And then I was lucky, lucky enough to work with um, Audrey Gordon and I studied, she was a, a marvelous uh, 
literature teacher and history teacher at Marlboro, and I studied the history of dramatic literature. Oh, so that I also had the language. Right. And history became this magical place. Oh, that's so interesting. It was great. Yeah, it when something a, lights up, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So I had pictures and words, and all of a sudden history was delicious. Yeah. Um, and then I, I was, you know, acting in plays every term, and I got to a certain point, um, probably my sophomore year, the end of my sophomore year, where my wonderful art history teacher, Willine Clark, um, said that I needed to start making some decisions hmm. about whether I was going to pursue theater or pursue art. Hmm. And her quote was, the theater is a jealous mistress. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I stuck with the jealous mistress. Oh, you did. I yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. I did. Although it was at Marlboro, it was great because I was doing set designs and right. I was doing lighting design yeah. and so it wasn't just acting, directing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so you got to know like a whole surround of what theater actually is. I did yeah. and, and sort of all of the creative input mm -hmm, that goes into mm -hmm. making a play happen. Right, right, right. Um, and that sort of brings us to uh, early theater in Brattleboro which um, was a time, we're talking I think probably 80s, when there was quite a bit of theater in Brattleboro. Yep, I graduated from Marlboro in 1980 mm -hmm. and uh, somehow met Carla Baldwin, I'm not quite sure how we connected. Mm -hmm. And at that point I was, I had been done a lot of lighting design and she heard about that and she asked me if I would light a show for her and the show was Jacques Brel is Alive and Well and living in Paris. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was, I think that was my first introduction to theater in Brattleboro mm -hmm. in terms of acting mm -hmm. or, or being involved in a production I wasn't acting. Mm -hmm. um, and that was great. And that led to actually a year long job at the Putney School because the technical person was going on sabbatical mm -hmm. for a year. So mm -hmm. that was great. Mm -hmm. It was lighting and set design. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And um, and was this the beginning, or was Brattleboro Community uh, Performing Arts (BCPA) was that already established that was, in town? That was already established. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and there was a lot going on. I think the Monteverdi players were still uh, performing. John Carroll was directing uh -huh. these sort of wild, wonderful fantasy was, pieces. Was that out of Packers Corners or was I that think in town? That I, this was, I think some of them were in town. There was one that was on the little island uh, on the bridge on the way to oh, yeah. to New Hampshire. Uh -huh. um, there was a wonderful, wonderful production of Life is a Dream that was in a field in Guilford. <laughs> That's so great. Um, yeah, uh, that actually my husband Matt performed in. Uh -huh. And there, were, there was theater all over the place. Yeah. San Pilo was directing um, I remember doing plays in the Latches Hotel, but not in any of the, I think there was a ballroom, it was called the Latches oh, Ballroom. interesting. And it was turned into a black, black box theater. Oh, wow. So we did a lot of really wonderful productions yeah. there. And Sam was a great, fun director. And he's still around I directing. I know, he's still as directing. Is, as is Carla. I, Carla Charles is Carla's still doing yep. theater. And, um, and so you, so this was in the, um, Part of this was going on in the church, which is now Hotel Pharmacy. Is That's that right? right? That's right. So upstairs there was a beautiful, beautiful theater. And then downstairs there was a storage room. And um, a group of us decided that we wanted to do, we wanted to collaborate. We mm. wanted to do some late night theater. Sam Greenhoe was one of the group and he was writing plays. Mm. So uh, we thought it would be fun to do maybe a serial or a series of plays. Mm -hmm. and. We cleared, we got permission from the BCPA, we cleared out the storage basement. We built tables and we got <laughs> candles and we put them into <laughs> jelly jars and we bought huge jugs of cheap, probably really revolting wine, I don't uh -huh, remember. Uh -huh. And we did an after play performance. So, so we were all doing plays in different theaters and we would you know, run up to the BCPA and we, at about 10 o'clock at night, we'd get all ready for our show. And then we'd, we had a tiny little stage. I think it was, I think it was the size of, of a sheet of plywood, maybe, wow. maybe twice the uh -huh. size. And the uh -huh. lights were, um, 
the lights were just light bulbs um, on the floor on a, a household dimmer. Uh -huh. So they were they were footlights, but uh -huh. they were really jury rigged footlights. Yeah. So this is kind of a cabaret. So, so it was very great. much like a yeah. cabaret. So yeah. we'd do this crazy twenty minute show that we'd spent, you know, the the week working on, uh -huh. and then after the show, the uh, these jazz musicians from Marlboro College would this is so cool. Perform. It was I had great no fun. idea. I was here in Brown I had no idea this was going on. It it was just for one summer, and it was. Uh, it was very time intensive, but it was so much fun. Yeah, it sounds fabulous. Yeah, and really great was. spaces, really beautiful spaces there. Brattleboro's full of it amazing, is. weird little spaces. Yeah. I mean, yeah. think about the buildings that are facing the river. There are catacombs in yes, there that I know. I'd love to explore. I know. We all think about those, those buildings facing the river. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, and uh, so from, I'll stop a minute. Um, so you were doing all of this theater, and this is the 80s, and then when did you get to Greenwood School? Um, I moved, to, I went to Providence, Rhode Island for mm -hmm. a while. I went to Trin Trinity Rep Conservatory, mm -hmm. and then moved to New York City with Matt Skeel and some other Marlboro people. Um, and we lived there for about three years, and then I moved to London for a year. Oh. Uh, London, England, and just, spent a lot of time in museums and, and spent a lot of time exploring places in the winter where nobody else mm -hmm. was because no one wanted to walk around Stonehenge mm, in the winter or mm. walk around Bath in the winter. Yeah. It was great. Um, so we came, I think Matt and I, we eloped and we got married there in 1985 mm -hmm. and we returned to Brattleboro. Because why not? Because right? why not? Because why not? It's home. It's home. Exactly. And we stayed with... Um, a very good friend, Kendall Gifford, out in Westminster West. Uh -huh. He had a house out there, which he called Chateau de Brie. We <laughs> stayed in Chateau de Brie and found our first home. I was on a mountain bike ride and ran into someone, and we were just chatting. And I said, "Oh yeah, we just moved here. We're looking for a place to live." And she said, "Oh, I know a place." And you know, typical Vermont. Yeah, right. Right. We we found a home, and we ended up buying land across the street. We've been there ever since. Oh wow, that's so great! So so I worked a couple of different jobs, um, and eventually a, a, another very dear friend, um, Janice Broom, let me know that there was a job available in the public school system working with a child that had Down syndrome, mm. and she thought that it would that I would be a good fit. Mm -hmm. So that was my first teaching, professional teaching mm -hmm. job in mm -hmm. Brattleboro. Mm -hmm. And I did that for about three years, and it was great fun, and mm -hmm. got to do, again, do theater with kids at the Green Street mm -hmm. School, mm -hmm. and there were all sorts of really wonderful experiences. Um, and then my friend Greg Lesh, who's a wonderful actor in Brattleboro, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm came over and we were chatting and I said, what do you do? What's your job? And he said, well, I work at a place called the Greenwood School in Putney and I had never heard of it. I'd lived in mm. you know, the area for a long time and had never heard of it. And he, he told me about the job and he told me about the kids and what he was doing. He was directing and he was teaching communications and mm -hmm. it sounded really wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I said really half jokingly, oh, well, if you ever leave, let me know because I'm going to apply for that job. And he got in touch with me about six months, five months later, mm -hmm. and said, I'm leaving. Wow. <laughs> and so he gave me information, and I contacted Tom Scheidler, uh -huh. and I applied for the job. You applied for a job there. Yeah. You end up at Greenwood School. I do. And, uh, which is in Putney. And you're, you're now teaching social pragmatics. Could, it, sounds, it sounds a little daunting. So could you tell us a little bit what social pragmatics I is? I will. I will do my best. Social pragmatics really is everything to do with being social. Mm. And if you were to um, take a person that was very successful in business, but was not a happy person socially, mm -hmm. and a person who earned a lot less, but had a lot of friends and a lot of connections, probably the happier person would be the person that had social skills mm -hmm. and that was more socially adept. Mm -hmm. So. You know, social skills covers the gamut. Mm. It's it's everything from understanding 
and being able to use nonverbal communication, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whether that's eye contact or tone of voice mm -hmm. or facial expressions. So there's receptive and expressive nonverbal mm -hmm. communication. Mm -hmm. Everything right up to um, having a very successful job interview mm -hmm. um, or being able to ask someone out on a date and right. perhaps they say yes and that's mm -hmm. terrific and mm -hmm. perhaps they say no and then how do you gracefully accept mm -hmm. a no mm -hmm. and not take it personally yeah. and be able to move on. And you know looking back on what you said before it, that you were diagnosed with dyslexia in seventh grade which for the time to me is remarkable uh, that they were that forward thinking. Yeah. And so for you to be at Greenwood um, I'm sure that you know you've got um, a level of uh, empathy and understanding that comes with with having weathered some of those storms. So. I think so, and I also f really felt like I was with my tribe. Mm. I felt like I'd oh. found my tribe, oh, um, yeah. and I was so impressed by the the work that these kids were doing, mm. um, and and the progress that they were making. Mm -hmm especially academically, mm -hmm. um, but it also became apparent very quickly that a, that a lot of the kids that were just classically dys dyslexic, perhaps because they'd been so busy trying to figure out what was going on, on academically, mm -hmm. or perhaps just because this was part of their, uh, their diagnosis, mm. their cognitive picture, mm -hmm. a lot of these kids really struggled mm. socially. Uh -huh. Um, they struggled to say the right thing yeah. at the right time. They didn't yeah. know how to not say every thought that came into mm -hmm. their heads. And mm -hmm. so and so you work with kids in that kind of um, discipline, actually, and retraining. I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. And, and the field really, when I started in, you know, the late, late, late 80s, mm -hmm. the field wasn't even really called social pragmatics. I'll bet, yeah. Um, and so a lot of it was reinventing the wheel and trying uh -huh. to be creative, trying to find creative ways to teach. Well, you know, students what I think stuff. is so amazing, you know, when you were talking about art history, for one thing, to to have art history come, to have history come alive for you, because right. there's a visual component to it. I would think that um, the things that you've done with art and theater and art history, music, Greek myths, you know, working with kids at Greenwood School would just be so wonderful. And, and opening up that creativity, which op also, I would think, opens up the doors to understanding and learning. Absolutely. And I think that for me personally, getting involved in theater was, I think the impulse behind it was that I wasn't quite mm. certain how um, certain social functions worked uh, and so I got to play a lot of different characters oh, and yeah. read a lot of scripts and and yeah. um, you know I think really I was it was stealth pragmatics I was learning yes. about yeah. social through acting yes. and so to um, to do role plays with kids mm -hmm. is really great fun mm -hmm. you know but it also because it's really fun to role play things the wrong way I mean there's nothing right. better than saying I want you to come into the room and I want you to just completely disrupt everything that's happening in here and show me what that looks like ah, and it's great. Uh -huh, yeah. And then they can they can turn around and come back in and do it the right way. Wow. And so, that in itself is so creative, you know, to give to give kids another way of doing something that isn't threatening and that, you know, again opens up something. That's, yeah. That's very cool. Yeah, um, it is. And um, and so yes, yeah, so I would think that it would affect you. A bit too to be working with these kids. Absolutely. First of all, um, it's incredible to be working with these remarkably courageous people every single right, day. Right. Right. Um, you know, kids who are so bright and they know that they're not learning in the in the way that learning is being presented to them. Mm -hmm. um, that that they're dealing with really a teaching disability, I think, more than a um, learning disability. Very interesting. Yeah. And. Um, the other thing is that a lot of them, and this is, I think this was a major part of the school's philosophy. A lot of these kids were being pulled out of the arts mm. in order to go to speech and language mm -hmm. or whatever classes that they were, mm -hmm. you know, that they, whatever support classes they needed. So Greenwood has always been 
a huge proponent for the arts and we've always emphasized that the arts are as important as anything else. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of these kids were finding talents that they didn't know that they mm -hmm. had, mm -hmm. which was mm -hmm. great. And, mm -hmm. and, and you know, I remember I had a student who came in and said, I, I'm terrible at art. I've had a lot of students who have come in and said, I'm, I'm a terrible mm -hmm. artist, or I'm a terrible actor, or I'm, I, don't, I don't do music. And, you know, some of these kids have gone on to become musicians so great. and actors right. and artists and tattoo artists and all kinds right. of Right, and it sounds like coming at it from people. different angles is extremely helpful. Right. And you've incorporated all these things into, you, into um, learning, you know, the theater right. and all of that and all of the arts. Right. And we also, you know, it's, I work with a lot of really phenomenal co coworkers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, um, and they're very creative mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. I think about Mike Kohout, who's another local, yeah, yeah, who yeah. is just, you know, he is a genius. He's fabulous. He yes. really is fabulous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we are, our time is, is running short, but I do want to talk about two things. One is um, the Annies that you and um, Annie Freilich, Freilich, Freilich. Freilich, mm -hmm. Annie Freilich um, have been doing for a number of years. And um, uh, if you can just tell us a little bit, because uh, it's such a great little gig and people just love it. It is great. It's so much fun. I feel like Annie is, um, I like to think of her as Carl Jung's dream girl. She, <laughs> she goes to sleep at night and then she wakes up and she says, oh, I had this amazing dream about this amazing puppet, <laughs> you know, um, and she, she creates this puppet, you know, this remarkable and, and it becomes this, you know, huge part of our show, which yeah. is fantastic. Yes, yes. So, um, so she is just like part of this artistic, creative unconscious. She's just she's in the flow, mm -hmm. and she's so much fun mm -hmm. to work with. So we discovered each other because her, uh, she did a birthday party mm -hmm. for a friend of my daughter's, and. I was blown away, mm -hmm. and afterwards I said, I want to be an Annie. Mm -hmm. We happen to have kids at Neighborhood Schoolhouse, mm -hmm. and so we created a show for one of their functions. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, it just kind of had, had a life of its own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was very interesting. Yes, it is. All of a sudden people started saying, oh, do you have a card, and, That's and so great. can yes. we hire you? And, and you know, I think, I think too that um, the thing about the Annies is that, um, as you say, you know, the word spread, but there's, um, I would really suggest that people go to your website and look at it because the endorsements, I have some here that we're not going to have time to read, but people just love the show and, and I think that one of the things that's stated on your site is that you're both dedicated to being as entertaining for adults as well as children. Absolutely. That that's a big part of it. Yeah. yeah, it's but a huge part of it. The scenarios are just <laughs> fabulous. I mean, people really need to see you in person and, and to experience they can, it. They can come and see us at Winter Carnival. Yay! Winter Yay. Carnival in Brattleboro. We'll Don't be forget at the that. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's great. Um, and and studio camp that you've been doing for quite a while with kids in the summertime mainly, right? Yes. So, what, just... so one of the things that I discovered was that there's a time to teach skills and then there's a time to let kids go. I think that it's really important to let students creativity run free a little bit. Mm. Um, I think that it's great to have projects that teach skills, but mm -hmm. I think being too project based um, gets tiring mm. for students. Mm -hmm. And so um, Studio Camp is a little bit like my art classes at Greenwood in that um, I let the kids take a tour of the studio, I show them where everything is, and then tell them that they can just go at it, have at it, make mm -hmm. whatever they want. Mm -hmm. And I run around a lot. Uh, it's this little chorus of Annie, 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 Annie. <laughs> oh, that. And I run around a lot and help facilitate. But it's really, it's amazing how much of a relief it is for some of these kids to just do whatever they want. Right, yeah. And some of them, there's, you know, they can do jewelry making, they can cast silver, they can do printmaking. Some of them spend hours gluing stuff together uh, and just yeah. making these constructions yeah. because they don't have to yeah. do what something that's thing. prescribed. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really so lovely. So they can really express themselves. They can know. really express themselves. And some kids go home with just tons of these amazing projects and others don't even necessarily want to bring what they made home. It was mm. just the process. Mm -hmm. And I really, mm -hmm. I really like that. Yeah. I think process is everything. Yeah. Yeah, and to find your own process. And you know, I think that in the course of, um, you know, what we've talked about, 
um, you know, I think people are always fascinated by creativity, mm -hmm. you know, and the creative process. Um, but to realize that you you have to jump in someplace, you know. Absolutely, you <laughs> and, do. And to have you know the the wealth of experience that um, you were given in your family, you know, to be able to have that in front of you and to move from there. Um, is really, it's a wonderful thing. It know? is a wonderful yeah. thing. Yeah. And I, 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 sometimes I get to make art in my art classes, which is really a wonderful thing. Oh, that's thing. great. So I get to sit side by side with my students at Greenwood yeah. um, when they're working on independent projects and when they don't need me in that moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can sit at an easel or I can sit mm -hmm. at the table and draw. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really fun to join them in that process. Yes, yes, because you become part of their process as well. That's right. And yeah. they see me as one of them. Yes. Yeah, that too. That Which too. they may not know it, but I really am one well, of them. Well, that's okay. Well, I think I think your spirit really shows that, you yeah. know, in all of your, you know, whether whether it's performance or working with kids or the Annies or whatever, you know, it's it's the that that wholesome creative spirit really shines through. Good. It's wonderful. Thank you. Annie, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you so much yeah, for having it's me. It's great to have really you and appreciate to, hear, it. to hear all these stories. It's great. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um, Thank you all for joining us again today. We um, love to have you here. We'd love to hear from you. Um, you can check out the site on brattleborotv.org. Here we are. You can check in and see all of our archive shows. Um, and uh, tune in next time. It'll be great to have you. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm.